There's a lot of guides out there already saying what to do and what is needed and all, but I'm here to share my strategy when I start Genshin Impact on the global release on September 28th. Do note that this is solely based on my experience and my analysis on the game while I was playing in the China server. I will grind it hard the moment it comes out and I have no plans of wailing in the game to get all the characters. Updates of my progress will be posted in the channel. My mentality the moment the game opens its server is to level up my world as fast as possible. In the game you start with your world level at zero. Your world level dictates the level of the monsters you face, the rarity of the items you receive from chests, the rewards you get from the quests. To increase your world level you have to increase your adventure rank. Your adventure rank is increased through quests, chests, dungeons, teleport, statue discoveries, boss fights with chest rewards. Next mentality is I will only roll for characters or weapons if there are wishes given by the game or an event. I'll never spend my primo gems on it. I will adhere to this mentality. There's no use trying to get a lot of characters early on in the game. You'll just be lost on who to prioritize. You'll lose direction. And direction isn't something you should lose in a gacha game. Prioritize getting to the end game first before you wish for more characters. You will have two chances to get additional characters the moment you land in Teyvat because of the events. You'll be given 20 wishes. I suggest you use that on the beginner wish and get Noel while the next character you're going to get will be RNG. Whatever you get, suck it up, deal with it, and focus on progressing. Let's get to my master starting plan. The very first day, my priority would be to unlock daily commissions, which will be unlocked if you reach adventure rank level 12. Daily commissions are a bunch of random quests that you do that will give you a set amount of daily adventure rank XP that resets, you guessed it, daily. So you have to unlock this at the first day of release. To achieve adventure rank level 12, I'll follow the story and the side quest that will be available to me. Don't forget that OP food I kept telling you about in my recent videos too. You gotta unlock that, it's useful. If I'm short, I'll explore in the world and unlock teleport waypoints, statues, and chests on the way to get more bonus adventure rank XP. My resins will be for acquiring gold and experience tickets, which will be completing leyline blossoms. Yellow is for mora, or gold, and blue is for experience tickets. You will feel rich at the start because of the things the game will gift us since it's opening, but I'm telling you, it's not enough. So stack up that gold. Same with that experience ticket. You would feel like it's really abundant at the very start, but trust me, it won't be. Next is my mentality on crafting a 4-star weapon. Craft a 4-star weapon, you would need a blueprint, 50 crystal chunks, and 50 white chunks of iron. Let's just say that 4 crystal chunks would give you one Mystic Enhancement Ore, which gives 10,000 weapon XP. Three white chunks of iron gives you a fine Enhancement Ore, which gives 2,000 weapon XP. If you do the math, you're actually wasting 120,000 weapon XP just to get a 4-star weapon that is not even upgraded yet, nor ascended yet. In this game, there are three star weapons that can get completely OP once refined to the max. You can refine a weapon five times. It's difficult to refine a four star weapon five times, so don't worship them that much. Don't close your eyes to the potential of three star weapons. You wouldn't know how well it will synergize with the next character you're going to get. That is why I would actually suggest you guys to not use your three star weapons as fodder for your main weapons. Try as much as you can to find duplicates of these three star weapons. Like I said, they might be OP given the right playstyle and character. Don't worship four star weapons that much. Just, you know, just, just use them when you get them from the gacha or the game gives it to you. Then you use it, but don't go out of your way to craft one and just refine it for, you know, five times. You're gonna waste a lot of time and resources. The very first day, I will try to unlock all the teleport waypoints and statues. In the China beta, you'll be able to unlock everything on the map once you confront Storm Terror the first time in the story. 
I aim to confront Storm Terror in the first day. Unlocking teleport waypoints and statues not only get you around the world, but they also give you adventure rank experience. So, pretty much you'll see a lot of bonus XP lying around the world of Teyvat the very first time you arrive there. So, confronting Storm Terror or achieving that adventure rank will be easy peasy. Having all the teleport statues and you know waypoints will also be good for doing daily resource gathering, boss hunting, and daily commissions, which we will dive more in later in the video. Next up is map management. Genshin Impact gives you the opportunity to make 99 custom pins in your map. Make use of them by marking where crystal chunks, chunk of iron, and white chunk of iron in the map will be a really huge help. These are resources you can use to max out your weapons and you'll need to stack up on a lot of them especially for endgame. Apart from iron and chunks, mark ingredients as well that you can use for cooking food. My personal favorite is that purple OP recipe you get at the start of the game, just before the quests become ultra demanding with adventure rank requirements. So for my ingredients, I marked lotus heads and juyuan chili. It's up to you, maybe you have a favorite food there that I don't know. Another thing from ingredients you should mark are the ascension materials for your characters. You can easily preview the material requirements for the ascension of your characters in the character menu. Make sure to mark where you got them so that you can repeatedly gather them because you're going to need plenty the higher ascension you go for your characters. Next are the depths. These are the places that will require a key and inside will be a luxurious chest when you open them up. I think they will just refresh for the next day, but then again, you would need a key to open them and you'll get those keys as you play through the game. And maybe when you finish up a quest or maybe finish up a dungeon, you'll get a key. I will just mark them. Do not be eager. I will not open them. Why? I will open them when my world level is high already, not when it is low. So I get better rewards. When you open them, and your world level is low, you'll probably just get a purple. But if your world level is high, you might get a lot of legendaries there, and uh, you'll thank me later. Let's talk about resin management. I will use my resin on gold and experience lay blossoms, and the resin refills I plan to do is 4 refills per day, which in total would cost around 400 primo gems. The main reason for it is because the 5th and 6th resin refill is a damn ripoff of 200 per refill. So if you refill for 4 times a day, it would just seem like you spent 100 primo gems per refill. Resin refills at around 8 minutes. So to refill 120 resin, that would take you approximately 16 hours. The reason why we are speeding up world level progress is so that we can get more from the resin that we get per day. If your world level is stuck at low or zero, then all the dungeons, quests, and all exploration you do in your world are worth nothing, since they will be stuck at low rewards. Getting your world level immediately high is actually good for your future resins. In higher world levels, blue items will be really common. And then higher worlds than that, purple items would be more common. You would want to be in the world level where dungeons and bosses have a chance to drop those legendaries when you kill them ASAP. So for good progression, refill 4 times a day and invest on experience tickets for good unhindered character progression and gold as well since almost anything that you would upgrade would require gold. Now, some of the rest and refills you can use for weapon ascension material, character ascension, talent upgrade material dungeons, given that you will already use them. But if you can't ascend your character or your weapon yet, I still feel like going for gold or experience would be better. Alright, let's go for equipment management in the early game. Keep all the 3 star weapons. Why? Because duplicates can be used for refining an equipment. A hidden OP 3 star weapon might be hiding somewhere and you wouldn't want to miss it. They suck as refining food anyway. Mystic enhancement stones are the way to go for big PP enhancement experience. You get this by harvesting a lot of crystal chunks, opening chests, and doing some dungeons. 
The first artifact I will max out will be a purple or four star feather. The feather or whatever it's called is an artifact that gives off a flat out attack boost. It's not percentage based. In the early game, flat bonuses are better than percentage based bonuses. Maxing and getting four purple feather artifacts, regardless of their set bonus, should be priority so that your whole team deals good damage. Don't think about the set bonuses just yet. Okay, artifacts can only be upgraded by feeding it artifacts. Get your artifact food from chests and boss hunts, but never in the artifact dungeon in the early world stages. Only consider getting it in an artifact dungeon when you see that it can already drop 5 star artifacts, but it's still a risk since, you know, RNG can be, you know. Let's talk about resource management. You have two choices here, be a team player or be a thief. When you go to other players' world, your custom pins carry over, meaning all the markings you did for ore and other resources will likely be true, but teleport waypoints, statues, will be based on the player's progress and not yours. In another player's world, you cannot get rewards from chests, cannot get challenges, but do you, you do get rewards from boss fights with resin and bosses without resin. You can go to a random player's world and do quick pillage of his or her world or be with a friend and collect ores together. But do note that plants and mushrooms are on a first come first serve basis. Ores can be shared, the plants cannot. This is something that you should do when you don't have any resin to spend for the day already. There's nothing wrong of having a surplus of these ores. They will always come in handy when you ascend a weapon. You're going to need a damn load of weapon level up materials in the long run. Same goes for the food ingredients and ascension materials. More is always good. I have said a shit ton of things, so we have to summarize all of them, right? Here's a summary. Opening day, I'll rush to AR12 for daily commissions to be unlocked. Unlock all the statues and waypoints, mark mining spots, resources that will be used for ascension and depths. But those depths, those shrines that need keys, I will not open them yet. And for the daily grind, what I would do is, of course, the obvious, do daily commission. Next, gather resources, mines and all with the other players. Do boss hunts. And this one can also be with other players. Then in my spare time, I will pick chests, culus, and all the stuff you see in the process. Now, all the depths that I would see, I will always stress this out. I would just mark them in the map and probably wait for my world level to increase. I'll probably be opening my first depths at adventure rank level 40. And I'll let you know what I get from it. Then I will spend, you know, like I said, spend all my resin on gold or experience lay blossoms and spend my sigils on the ascension materials and gold, but not the four star blueprint. Now, the distribution of the resins I would get from my planned reset of four per day would be depending on my progression. If my weapons are ready for ascension or my characters are ready for ascension. Then I would enter one of those dungeons or boss fights to get the needed materials, if I already have no choice. If I do have sufficient ones, then I'll pile up more gold and experience tickets instead. Am I making sense here? Did I help you? Again, this is just my game plan when the server starts. Don't feel bad you don't have that glamorous character you saw in a YouTube video. You can still go through the game by maxing your characters up. Once you get to the end game, then you can do a lot of gacha, but for now, Focus on making your world level high so you don't get left behind. Builds and character reviews would come soon in the channel, so click that subscribe button and like the video for more Genshin Impact content. Like I said, only do gacha when the game gives you wishes, not when the game gives you primo gems. It's a damn trap. I'm telling you, I warned you, tell the others, share the video, see you in the next one.